A simple content collaboration system is a Notion template that is designed for creators looking to add more structure and organization into their content creation workflow. If you've been creating for a bit and you have a few people you're working with, like writers, designers, editors, etc., you probably have multiple projects going on at the same time, and they all are at different phases of completion. It can be really hard to juggle all those projects and make sure they're getting across the finish line on time. If you're constantly missing your scheduled release dates, you're spending too much time following up with your team members and or you have multiple projects going at the same time, this template is made for you. This template has one purpose, to provide structure to creators who are collaborating with people or running multiple projects so that they can keep their content system running as planned without losing their mind. If that sounds like you, over the next few minutes, I'll walk you through the ins and outs of this template so you can hit the ground running with your content creation. If you're a solo creator and you don't necessarily need collaboration features, then this template is not for you. We have a separate template for solo creators which I'll link to in the description. Now let's get into it. Once you download the template and you open it up, this should be the first thing that you see. On the left-hand side, we have a table of contents, which is there to help you navigate to the section that you wanna to go to quickly. On the right-hand side, we have a tutorial section, which is just a brief overview of the template, what it does, um, you know, some things to keep in mind, general housekeeping, how to use Notion, um, and then just a brief overview of all the sections in this template. Um, and then of course, once I finish this video and we upload this to YouTube, I'll put this tutorial over here as well. Uh, moving forward, the next thing we have on this template is the mobile friendly idea list. We're not gonna cover this now, we're gonna come back to this later because you really need to have an understanding of the full system and how it works for this to make sense. So the first thing we're gonna cover actually is the content table. Now this is where you log your ideas and you can also start working on them. Um, and we'll get into it uh, in detail, but we're going to start with the column headings and just walk you through what all these columns are. So starting with the left, we have the episode number. The reason I have this is because I actually use this template and this is a system I use for my podcast. You know, it started with a podcast and then it evolved to also include video essays and blog posts or articles. And so for the podcast, I actually put my episode numbers in the title. So it's really helpful just to keep track of like what episode number we have here. If your content doesn't need the episode number and you find this is just unnecessary, you can just go in here, right click and then delete property um, for this entire column. Next, we have release date. This is when you're actually scheduling to publish your content. After that, we have title. This is self-explanatory. This is where you actually put the title of the content. And then we have uh, pages in here too that we'll go into. But for now, we'll just, you know this is where you log your ideas real quick. You can just put whatever your idea is. Um, and then following that, we have status. So status in here, you can see we have a few different options. Um, so we have not started, so this is still an idea. And then we have in progress, we have three different sections here. So in progress, pre-production, post-production. So pre-production is like planning, writing, rough draft kind of thing. In progress for me means my writer gave me a rough draft and now I'm working on the edits. Uh, for a video essay, it means I'm actually shooting the video. Um, for a podcast, it means I'm actually recording the podcast. Um, for post-production, it means my editor has taken it. So like uh, for videos, it'll mean, um, you know, my editor is actually working on adding the motion graphics and any other features and actually cutting down and trimming to get the final product. And then we have completed. So once it's done and, and ready to go live, we put it in done and we post it. So these are just the categories that I use. Now this works for me because I have one person for pre-production, like my writer, he's the only one that's doing pre-production. And then in progress is just me. And then post-production is my editor. So like, it's pretty simple for me to kind of track who's doing what and where things are in the process, just because I have one person for each phase of the process. Um, now, if you have multiple people at, at different phases or you need to add a phase, you can always do that. So for example, if you have a writer that does pre-production and then you're the one recording and then post-production, you have an editor, but then you also have a thumbnail person, you can also add a thumbnail section here. Or whatever the case may be, it's just whatever works for you and your team, you can add. Now, another note here is we do have some pre-built in uh, automations here. So right now, this project is in pre-production. Just as an example, if you were to move it to post-production, it is gonna go from Asad Patel to, here we go, to me. And so what's cool about this is um, it does this automatically. So, and you see this red bubble popped up giving me a notification that I just got assigned 10 branding tips for beginners. Um, so we can just mark that as red. Now, if you wanna tweak these automations, you just click this little lightning symbol and you can tweak kind of who's assigned what to when they're assigned it. Um, you can also create new automations if you're not familiar with how to create automations, we're actually working on a video. Once it's live, I'll post a link in the description. But anyway, coming back to our columns, we have next is type. So by default, I only have these three, uh, video, podcast, and blog post. What you can do is whatever type of content you're working on, let's say 
Um, you're just focusing on a social media platform, let's say it's IG Reels, that you really wanna double down on, you can just add IG Reels here, and then that will change it here. And so that'll be one of the options you can pick. So that's totally up to you, depends on what type of content you're working on. Um, you can kind of uh, add whatever works for you. Uh, we'll just change this back to podcast. And then the last column here is assigned to. Now you can manually change this or manually add another person to. Let's say I also want Abdul Manan to work on this uh, with me so I can do that. But um, with these automations, I already have these kind of set. So it would automatically add people uh, once I set the status. Now if these automations are not nuanced enough, you have like, you know, a multiple step decision process for deciding who gets assigned what, then you might wanna just do this manually. I'm moving on to filters. So you'll notice that we have a filter active here and the filter we have is just for in progress and a to do. So basically like uh, only things that are not completed yet are in this view. Uh, but it can be helpful to have the things that you have completed. Uh, you know, let's say if you wanna duplicate the same page and you wanna take notes, then you wanna duplicate and use that as a format for the next one. We do have a completed section here that you can basically open up and see your kind of past work. Now, let's say, for example, your Molly Rowland interview was really good and you want to just duplicate that format that you use. You could just basically hit duplicate. Um, you can change the name to whatever you want. New interview. Um, and then what you can do is just change the status to not start it because it's a new one. And then it'll be here. All right. So coming back to pages, since we have three types of content, I actually created three templates for the types of content. So this is, for example, this is an actual video we worked on. It's a video essay. And all of our video essays, the template works like this. First, we start with a title, thumbnail, and then we go to the script outline, and, and then we have a section for research. Now, the reason we do this is because a lot of famous YouTubers that are really big right now, their advice and what they say they do is that if they can't think of a title and thumbnail that'll be good for the topic or the idea they have, they don't even make the video. So it's really important to get the audience's attention and get them to click before you can get them and, and provide them the actual content. And so... This is kind of how we have this structured. So we have the title, these are the three ideas we actually had for this idea, and then these are the thumbnail ideas we had. Um, and then this is the actual outline I wrote for this uh, script, and then this is the script that my writer wrote. And so, and then these are just the links that I used to do some research and take some notes on. Now, if we go back to a different example, if we go to a um, uh, article, for example, it's a little bit different. So instead of having a title thumbnail, we have the headline and then the subheading. Then we have the article draft, and then we have research here. Now, it's nice about having the research links all here is that if my writer is looking at these links, I can also take a look and see if I see a different perspective or, or I have a different take on some of these articles or videos or whatever he's doing research on. And then I can go in and kind of add my thoughts, add my comments, or I can even just go ahead and directly edit the draft uh, myself here. Now, moving on to the podcast format, um, if we open this up, this has the title, the thumbnail, and we have the show notes description section, and then we have a transcript section. So, you know, we haven't recorded this yet, so of course there's nothing there. And then there's, um, you know, other episodes like this. So one of the things I like to do in my podcast is at the end of the podcast, I'll, it's an interview-based podcast. So what I'll do is if, you know, there's a guest that talks about podcasting, at the end of the episode, it'll be like, hey, if you like this episode, you'll also like this one where they also talk about podcasting. And so I think this is super helpful to have this here uh, because it makes it easier for your audience to actually see the other kind of content. So basically it'll be there for you to reference, but then what you can do is basically all this stuff you have here, you can just copy paste. So you can just copy paste this into YouTube or your podcast uh, platform um, when you're posting it. But then also if you have a website, you can literally just copy paste the whole website. Or what you can do is if you wanna turn this Notion page into the actual podcast site, you can also do that. Um, in that case, instead of having the title like here, like it written as title, you would actually just move this into the title section here and then have the graphic and, you know, the show notes description would stay the same, transcript, other episodes like that. All the, the From the bottom, it would all stay the same. You just have to add the title and the thumbnail. And then you'd have a nice podcast page, which you don't really have to spend too much effort on creating a whole separate website for. So now up until this point, you've seen examples from my own content, but what if you want to create your own content? So let's say you have an idea for Notion AI. Let's enter that and then open it up as a page. So we have the templates actually built out here. So you can go podcast episode, blog post, or video essay. Um, and then I had a button view. What I did is I basically created a default page 
where uh, you can just click on podcast, blog, or video. Uh, but the thing is that the buttons actually took too long to load every time. So I found it to be easier just to do uh, the templates like this. So let's say we want to create a podcast episode um, for this topic. Literally, it'll load this all. Um, then it has a little bit of advice on actually creating the content here. And you just go through each section, fill it out. That way you don't have to spend time reinventing the wheel every time you're creating a new podcast episode or creating a new um, video essay or creating a new blog post. And of course, you can edit these templates however you want. So you can you know, edit the template to make it fit your content. And then you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. You just click the button and it's all there. My writer can go ahead and just start filling each section out. When he's done filling each section out, he just moves the status from... Uh, pre-production to in progress, and then I get the notification, then I can go ahead and take a look. Does it look good? Then I can move it on to the next phase. All right, so now moving on to the next section, all right, we have the calendar view. And I have this by default set up for a week because um, I actually don't look too far out. We don't have that big of a team. We don't have that much content coming out. Um, and, and we're doing this all part time, so we don't necessarily need to have like, you know, a month planned out. I try to have my content for this week ready the week before. Um, and then we're trying to work on next week's content this week. You know, it's Saturday today. So let's take a look at tomorrow so we can kind of uh, organize this. So basically what I'm seeing is we have four pieces of content coming out this week. What I'm going to do is just go through each of these and make sure, hey, are we actually ready to go with this? Does this look like it's in good shape to post? And if everything is looking good, we just schedule it and you know it'll post when it's supposed to. If not, let's say this article needs some edits and needs to be pushed back. What I'll do is I'll just move this over here. I'll just drag and drop to the seventh. So it's pretty simple. And then the nice thing is you can also edit this directly from here. So you can just put a comment like, hey, it's not ready to go. I need you to do X, Y, Z, whatever it may be, right? So let's just move this back here. So that's for this week. And then I go to next week and I'm looking at, okay, what pieces of content need to be worked on this week so that these are ready to go for next week's release date. And so I look at these and I make sure that these are on the radar of my uh, writer so that he starts working on making progress on these pieces of content. So that is the calendar view. Uh, moving on, we have the status board. This is where we can see the high level progress of all of our projects in a visual view. What I really like about this view is that it has all the not started things and I can basically prioritize these from here. So I can say intro to podcasting is probably gonna be the next video that I wanna work on. And so what I'll do is I'll just move this to pre-production. And so what happens is since we have that automation set up, so as soon as it goes to pre-production, let's see here, uh, intro to podcasting got assigned to Asad Patel. So that's another cool part about it. Um, let's move this back. One of the super satisfying things about these Kanban boards is dragging a board from one section to the next. So like you start at the beginning of the week, let's say you have you know uh, three videos that you put into pre-production and then throughout the course of the week, they get to put in progress and then post-production. And the most satisfying piece is when you're able to take a piece of content and really drag it to this done section. Now I think the note here, we have this filtered so that it only shows done for the last uh, month. So like the things you've done this month. Now you can change this to this week or you know today uh, or you know last five days or whatever it is, depending on how much content you're churning out because you don't wanna have too many things in this section and it just clogs it up. And finally, moving on to the work in progress board, which is next. Um, this is a view where I can basically get a look at who is assigned what. And what this really helps me do is to prioritize things for my team. So I can see, okay, Asa Patel is assigned two things. Amin is assigned one thing. I'm assigned one thing. Abdul Manan is assigned nothing. So the next thing, naturally, if we put an idea in place, we should give it to Abdul Manan. So this just really helps to visually understand how much work is on the plate of each of your team members. So then you can prioritize what task to give to each person. And now that you have the full context of all the sections of this uh, first page, we're gonna go to this mobile friendly idea list. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking, wow, this is literally just a list of ideas. This is super simple. And yes, it's meant to be super simple. We purposely left out a lot of the features that we have on the dashboard for this view. And the reason for that is because inspiration can strike at any moment. It can be in the shower, it can be when you're washing dishes, driving a car. When that inspiration strikes, you have to stop what you're doing and take note. You may not have your laptop, you may not have your pen and paper with you, but you almost always have your phone with you. Naturally, most people will go to their notes app when they have a bunch of ideas flowing. Now the problem with that is it doesn't feed into your pipeline. So the benefit of adding your ideas into this list 
instead of your notes app is that this automatically feeds into your pipeline. And it's a simple thing, so you can open it up on mobile and it's not gonna be clunky or anything like that. So if you just hit new, let's say you have an idea for a Notion video again, Notion AI, you hit enter, and you can just leave it at that. And then that, if we go back to our simple content collaboration system, is gonna pop up right here. So when you're on desktop, or I mean, you can still do this on mobile, but you know, most people prefer using it on desktop. Now, if you're when you get back on desktop, you can just go in, you can assign a date to it, you can say, hey, this is gonna be a video essay. Um, and then you can, you know, open it up, you can add your notes, you can just say, you know, video essay here and start filling it out. Now, if we go back to the mobile friendly idea list, and you'll notice here we don't have any dates, we don't have who it's assigned to, what the status is. We stripped that all away because this is meant to be just a quick capture system. And so if you did have time and you wanted to add more, you could just open this up as a page and then start adding those details. You wanted it to be a video essay, you can add the video essay template, or you can just add general notes if you want, just notes. Um, and then you can add who it's assigned to, or you can add the episode number or the release date. And that is pretty much it for this template. Hope this was helpful. Hope this helps you in your content creation journey and working with your team. If you do end up downloading this and using the template, we'd love to hear your feedback. The link to do so is at the bottom of this template. You just click this link and it'll open up a page where you can submit a form and submit your feedback. If you like the template, let us know. If you didn't like it, you think there's some features we could add, or if it was confusing in some way, let us know. We'll work to fix that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing all the content that you create.